In this clip, we'll learn how to work with Mari's channels and layers. Okay, so in the previous clip, we learned about shaders inside of Mari and the purpose they serve. And we actually created this shader here, this AI standard, which is the equivalent of the AI standard over in Maya for use with Arnold. Now, we know that our particular project that we've been working with up till this point came with a single channel in it. We mentioned that in the previous clip, that that channel was created at the time the project was created. Now, if we come over and look inside the channel's palette, you'll see here there's that same diffuse channel. Now, obviously, on my canvas, you'll notice that our little crab creature has changed. His appearance now has some color to it. And that's because I've inputted, or rather imported, a flattened version of the color map for this particular creature. And I've added it to this diffuse channel, the one that our project was created with. I'll show you how that works here in just a moment. We'll bring in a normal map. But let's come back over here to our shader because we utilized that channel, again, that our project was created with. And I simply made a connection here by clicking on this little box to that particular channel for my diffuse color input. Now we can create channels inside of Mari directly from our shader for whichever uh, inputs we want to drive with a texture map. Or we can actually create channels over here inside of the channels palette simply by clicking this button here. Now, let me go ahead and show you one way. We'll come up back over to our shader and I'm going to find the normal input here. We'll just scroll down until we find it. There it is, normal map. And I'll just simply click on this button here. And you'll see here that we are now adding a channel to our project. And we can come in and give this a name. I'm just going to call this something like normal. And for the purpose of this example, I'm going to leave it set to its default size of 1024 by 1024. We can come in here and set the bit depth to whatever we want. I'll just leave mine set to 8 bit. And of course, the file space will leave that set to normal. Now, when you're creating a normal map here, there becomes some considerations that you have to take into account when it comes to the color space that that particular channel can support. So, if we come in here and click on the color space word, you'll see that this gets expanded. And by default, Mari wants to create an automatic color space for that channel. Now, the automatic assumed color space is going to be sRGB for color information. And you can see down here for masking data, it's assuming an automatic color space of raw, which will allow us to get raw data in terms of our masks. Now, if we were to create this, this is going to serve, uh, this is actually going to present us with a problem, but I'm going to leave this intentionally set to automatic sRGB. We'll go ahead and click OK. So you can see here what happens. Mari's going to go about the process of creating the channel for us, and it's going to connect it to our normal map input. Now, immediately on the canvas, things go awry. You can see the shading uh, in the viewport or in the canvas here is obviously wrong. So Mari's AI standard shader is expecting a normal map to help drive that input and it's not getting normal map data yet. Let's go ahead and give it some normal map data. I'm going to come over here to my channels palette and the way channels are set up inside of Mari is that Obviously, they, they hold a map that's going to connect to an input on our shader. But each specific channel comes with a layer stack. So layers and channels are closely related inside of Mari. In fact, with my normal channel selected right here in my channels palette, you can see I have a layers palette right next to it, right down here. Whichever channel we select is going to automatically be displayed in this layers palette. So you can see here I'm looking at my layers palette and the normal channel. Now there's a single layer here that was created when I created that channel and this particular layer has that, that default color and we had the option to change that when we created the channel but I left it set at sort of a neutral gray. And we could see this simply by coming in and clicking on that layer we can come over here and we can view the current layer. And again, right over here, you can see view the current layer. And again, these match up with what we saw in the shaders palette. So we've got current paint target, current layer, current selected layer and below, and then current channel. 
So if we selected the current layer and then turned off the lighting information here, you can see here that we're left with this flat gray default color. And this is what the AI standard shader is trying to read as normal data. And that's obviously not normal information. So let's go ahead and bring in some of that. If we come over here, we can do this a few different ways, but I like to just right click on the channel and we'll go to import and we're going to go to import into layer stack. But before I do that, I'm going to come over here and use my selection tool. We'll learn more about this here in just a little bit. And I'm going to make sure that I'm on patch selection mode. And I'm just going to draw a selection around all of the patches. So the entire creature gets selected. Great. So if we came in here and again went to uh, right click on our normal map, import, import into layer stack. And that's going to bring us up with this import into layer stack dialog. And I'm just going to browse really quickly to where I have my exercise files saved here on my hard drive. And I'm going to go into my reference files and let's go into textures. And inside of textures, you can see here that we have two different maps that are showing up. We have creature underscore diffuse and we have creature underscore normal. Now I want to show you what the contents of that folder looks like. Hold on just a moment and I'll drag that over. We'll just go ahead and pull that over from my other monitor so you can see exactly what is inside that folder. So you can see obviously we have 12 different image files that exist inside this folder. And what Mari is doing here is it's able to see that one of these is for the diffuse and one of these is for the normal map, but it's seeing these little numbers that are appended at the end of the file name. These are the UDIM numbers and they correlate to the different texture spaces, the way your UVs are laid out. So if we were to come over and look inside of Mari, uh, and let's just say we wanted the normal map, you can see here down below there's a template. So right now it's looking for this template, but if we selected creature underscore normal, look at what happens to that template. What Mari is seeing is it's seeing creature underscore normal underscore, and then it's picking up on dollar sign UDIM number. So that dollar sign UDIM is uh, part of the template. And if you mouse over this field, you can see all of the various different attributes that we can use uh, in terms of the template. So we could do something like dollar sign channel, dollar sign layer, dollar sign UDIM, dollar sign entity for object name, uh, and so on and so forth. So what Mari is seeing here is a series of maps and you can see if we scroll to the right here, it's UDIM 1001 through 1006, a total of six different images. So uh, now once we've selected that normal map, we could come over here and say either import all patches, or if we had made a strategic selection of just a few of the patches inside of our canvas, we could say import selected patches, and it would only import the image for those selected patches. I'll just say import all patches here. And Mari goes through this process of importing those various images and applying them to the appropriate texture space. So since we uh, have the current layer selected, we're not going to see things correctly. I'm just going to select the current channel. And then I'm going to come over here to my UV view. And I'll just click away with my selection tool. And what you can see here is that Mari has intelligently picked up on each of those six images and applied it to the correct texture space or UDIM number. Now looking here inside of our UV view, you can see that UDIM number right down here. And you can also see the size that the channel is currently set to for that particular patch. Okay, great. So coming back over here, let's just jump over and I'm going to actually hold down the I key just so I can quickly switch back to my AI standard shader. Now remember the I key is going to bring up the channel's pop-up and this would be no different than me coming over to my shader's palette and clicking on the AI standard. Okay, so now that we have that selected, let's turn our lighting back on. Okay, so obviously we have an issue here. Orbiting around, you can see here that the shading is wrong. And this is uh, kind of my first indication that we have a color space issue when it comes to the normal map. So whenever you are using a normal channel here inside of Mari, 
You don't want that to be set to an sRGB color space because basically what Mari is doing for viewport purposes or canvas preview purposes is it's double gamma correcting that. So basically we're using this sRGB view transform right down here as a result of color management being on. So essentially what we want to do is at the very least come over and switch the color space to linear. And in doing so, what will happen here is you can see now that normal map is being calculated correctly inside of Mari's viewport. Now there is one other concession we'll need to make when we go to send these maps back over to Maya, but we'll actually handle that as that comes about. But now that we know how to create channels inside of Mari, let's talk a little bit about these layers. Now layers are where you place paint, and if we came over and now looked at the layer stack for that normal channel, you'll notice that there's a new layer here above that base layer, just called layer. We can double click on that and call that something relevant, maybe normal map. But you can see there is a little paint palette next to that particular layer. That relates to the style of layer inside of Mari. Now really there are three different styles of layer that you're going to be working with when you're painting and creating textures in Mari. You have paint layers like this one. This is one that you can paint pixel data onto. You can see there's a button to create new paint layers right here you have adjustment layers and that's going to be this guy right here and just like in applications like Photoshop Mari has a number of different types of adjustment layers now I'm not going to get into those right now but the third type you're going to be dealing with here is called a procedural layer and there are a number of different procedural layers that we can work with inside of Mari as well you can see several of them here so we'll be looking at layers a little bit more as we get into painting, but in this clip we've learned how to create channels and layers here inside of Mari, and we've learned what the relationship between those two things is to the shader that we're using.